Hey y'all, welcome to the Coyote Traffic School Podcast. I am your host, Chris Pope, coming at you a little bit under the weather uh, as we're winding trapping season down. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know about you, but it's always kind of a uh, uh, mixed blessing. I don't know if that's, a, that's the right way I'm trying to phrase it or not, but, uh, you know, it's a bittersweet, I guess. You know, looking forward to the end of trapping season. Granted, I haven't hit, hit trapping as hard this season as I have in past, but, uh, I'm trying to finish the year out strong. Got a big, big farm set up, and, and still working on getting some more traps out. And so that's what I was going to kind of go through is, is some of the things that I've been I've been thinking about uh, really over the last six months to a year. Um, first off, I want to thank our sponsors, Cotts Bros Lures, uh, top notch trap and supply company, and lure and bait makers. If you need any uh, lure and bait or trap and supplies. Put in an order to them, and they're going to get your stuff shipped out ASAP, quicker than you would imagine. Um, and that's what I'm using on my trap line right now. They're red label and they're gold label baits. Uh, I got the, the lures and all rocking, so uh, it's, it's uh, jam up stuff. And I like just I like those guys' stories of starting, uh, you know, starting very early as teenagers in the trapping industry, and they've built their built their lives and careers around trapping. And I. Uh, Man, I appreciate and respect that a lot. So if you enjoy the podcast and, and what we're doing, be sure to go support uh, Cotts Bros the next time you need some trapping supplies and uh, let, them know, let them know where you heard them from. And uh, they're located in Illinois, Savannah, Illinois, I think. But um, they'll hook a, hook a southern trapper up for sure. So in this, this episode, it's, it's kind of... I feel kind of playing off of the, the Clint Locklear book we reviewed earlier, Mindset of a Professional. And just as I've, as I've read that last year and then um, you know going through the process of, of trying to start and grow a, a nuisance trapping business and, and then you know coming up with opportunities on the, the fur trapping side, you know for uh, fur trapping trapping season side. Um, that, that and that mindset thing has has really kind of been been turning in my mind and so uh you know it, it really the the idea for this episode started i think last week which maybe week four last now if you're listening i'm not sure when this is going to post yet but uh I, I made a post on instagram and facebook about replacing conor bear triggers so uh, i made a, a catch um otter catch and when I went to reset the conner bear, naturally one of the triggers was one of the trigger wires was broken off. And um, as I had kind of been getting ready um, for for setting these traps, I kind of been thinking about that and, and thinking about you know that's something I always run into every season is as I'm trying to adjust those trigger wires and bend it back in place or something, inevitably one or both are gonna break off or I'll make a catch and get there and, and get the trap, and get ready to reset the trap and both kind of bear, both trigger wires are gone. Son of a gun, you know? And uh, so I, I made that post and, and it kind of uh, got a little bit of get a feedback, but um, yeah, that's, that's really kind of what started this all rolling in my mind, and and uh, I guess from that professional mindset, for starters, that's not for everybody. Obviously, there are some guys, some of y'all out there that are that are hobby trappers that are you know trapping on your your family land or on your homestead or on your uh, hunt club, and, and that's all you're interested in. And I'm that's awesome. You know that's that's why I started this was to help people that were interested in getting getting started in trapping, you know, trying to lay out everything that I know so that, you know, as many people that were interested, there would be fewer hurdles for them to get started trapping. Um, but as I've, from from the get-go, I started trapping, honest to goodness, um, with the idea when I was in high school, well, this is a way that I can uh, earn money and, um, you know, do something. I, I like being outside. I like chasing animals, and so, you know, this is a way I can do something I enjoy and earn money at it. Now, that being said, um, there's not been a lot of opportunities that I've truly made money trapping. Um, there have been a, a handful of times, and I've come up with some specialty markets. Probably one of the better, um, the better times uh, that I had money-wise was 
uh, when I was in college, right before the uh, the um, Great Recession of 08 on, uh, me and a, a buddy of mine were trapping pretty hard, and uh, we had a taxidermy market that, man, it just seemed like whatever we caught, we could sell it whole frozen for get shipping costs covered and get paid better than anything we could do, um, you know, skinning it, fleshing it, and drying it. And uh, we sold, man, there's no telling what all we shipped from otters and bobcats and, um, you know, that we, we made some we made some pretty good money doing that. And, and it was great because we had less work in it too, you know. Um, but, so I, I've always had that mindset and, and even going through college at, and, and even as I, I started my career, you know, I always had a, an, an idea or a thought and I'd really like to uh, be in the, damage control business you know I'd like to I'd like to have my own business own my own trapping business and uh, so so that like I said that's just getting that out of the way right off the get-go the the professional mindset that I'm kind of I've kind of leaning at and, and I don't I, uh, pointing out is not applicable to everybody obviously uh, and that's fine like I said I, it's just as, as I've been thinking about it and not just not even professional um, like you know a, a job but even these guys that are that are putting up big numbers of, of coyotes or, or anything um, you know that there's a there's a mindset there that they're that they're targeting and you listen to you listen to some of those top trappers and um, you know they, they talk about their systems and you know their trapping systems and man they've got they've got everything lined out they've got everything planned out they've got contingency plans and they know how everything rolls and that helps them you know that's that creates efficiency and efficiency is what um, you know saves time and ultimately saves money right and so it, for me kind of it, over the last few months as I've been thinking about that and that, that mindset plays uh, so much of a, a role in in everything I feel like um, and so you know in, in the last six to eight months I've shifted from when somebody, you know, when, I, when I'm talking with somebody, I meet somebody new, and inevitably they ask, what do you do? And uh, I've started saying, you know, I, I run a nuisance wildlife removal business. And, and just that, for one, that kind of reinforces in my mind, hey, this this is what I do. This is me. Um, I, I'm not doing that full time yet, but that concretes in my mind and helps to reinforce in my mind you know, this is this is where we're going this is what we're doing this is our goal this is our game plan um, and then it also you know that, that kind of puts you out there and, and it gives you a little bit of level of accountability even if it's just uh, you know kind of in your own mind but it also brings up opportunities just because whoever you're talking with you know you never know I can't tell you there's there's been you know, times that somebody says, "Golly, I, you know, I've been wondering. I've been hearing something in my attic, or I think I got squirrels in my attic, or you know, just things that if you hadn't mentioned that, you know, they they would have called somebody else, you know, down the road, and and uh, and you know, never thought about it, or never thought about you, and just the way that can kind of come up and, and come top of mind, and um, you know, like I say, you just you never know, you never know what kind of impact that may have." what kind of conversation that may spark that oh well you know a, a friend of mine's got got skunks under his house and man he's been trying everything maybe I'll give him your number um, and I think that that you know just that that personal mindset of of you know reinforcing this is this is my identity so to speak I think that goes a long way but then right there you know right right there right up with mindset I, I would say is equipment and that's something that um, you know I started noticing as I've, I've, I've started doing this these uh, ADC jobs damage control jobs and you know showing up and meeting with homeowners and meeting with landowners and, and pricing jobs and things like that and um, you know there's for a lot of right off the bat you know there would be times as um, you know, I'd get in my truck and I'd go, um, I'd go meet somebody, meet a client, and uh, I didn't. Maybe I didn't have enough. Maybe I didn't have time to, you know, gather up all my materials or preload everything, or um, you know, 
having you know sticking ladders in the bed of your truck and some you know sling them in there at the last minute and uh, well I got to get all this other stuff out and um, as I as I started doing that and you know I, I just really got thinking of how important it is to, to to have that equipment have your equipment ready know what equipment you need um, and, and um, so you know I've gone through the process I bought a ladder racks for my truck that way my bed space is always open. It's easy to put the ladders on and off. Um, I can get to anything in the bed that I need to, even if the ladders are up there. Uh, it's just one thing, and it, and it gives you, it, it looks professional, you know. Uh, it looks looks like you're the real deal instead of uh, some guy that's you know just does this on the side and just throws his ladder in the back of his pickup. Um, but then, you know, if you've got all the right equipment and you've got it with you, and that was one thing that I you know I, I had to. And I'm still working through, but going through because, you know, it's, it's not, this is not a full-time gig yet. So my my truck is my personal truck as well as, uh, you know, my trapping truck. And so I'm shifting stuff back and forth in and out. And so uh, I tried to get kind of streamlined and efficient with, all right, these are the tools that I tend to use the most. And so I've got, you know, separate toolboxes that I put them in. And then I know, all right, I grab these two toolboxes, put them in the truck, and that's got everything I need. And uh, just just trying to think through that and make sure that I've got my bases covered and uh, and then you know when you when you go into jobs making sure you've got all the material that you need and this is this is I'm I hope this is not being too um, basic but I'm saying all this because this is just stuff that I've kind of I've had to go back and, and do because I didn't think about it ahead of time. So, you know, I show up on a job or I'm on my way to a job and, oh man, I needed screen wire for this job. So I got to turn around or I got to stop it, uh, you know, someplace and gonna pay a little bit more for it because I didn't think about it ahead of time. Um, and so that's another thing that, uh, you know, I've, I've done is I've accumulated some of the materials that I know I need for a lot of jobs so that I don't go up to a job and, you know, realize, well, shoot, I gotta order this stuff. It's gonna take three days for it to get here. So that's, you know, everything's at a standstill until I get this this material in. Um, and all that all that boils back down to efficiency. And especially in those kind of situations, you know, the, the quicker you can do those jobs and not, I don't, I don't mean that in a, you know, get it done as fast as you can, but you know, you obviously you wanna do the job right but the quicker you can do that because you've got all the right equipment and you're saving trips to the store and things like that, then you know that's obviously more money in your pocket because your time is money when you're when you're working like that. You know, you you price a job, and then the the quicker and more efficient you can get it done, the more money that goes into your pocket versus going for paying expenses. And um, I just think that. Maybe maybe other trappers are a lot more organized and a lot more thoughtful than me, but I, I tend to be a last minute person and um, you know wait till the last minute to try to throw everything together and and you know take off and, and and get there just in time and that's not in my opinion that's not the right the, the proper way to run a successful um, business now please keep in mind that I'm not running a full-scale business yet um, but I am slowly working there I feel like and I think these I feel like these things are little things that I've, I've learned as I've, I've working towards this and so hopefully maybe some of this stuff that I can put out because I'm sure there are some young guys like me that you know have, have the thought in their mind that man this is something that I can do and I can do well and uh, you know I can make a career out of this and Maybe this will help you to think through a few of those things beforehand, so that you don't show up, and uh, you know you're missing equipment, and then you got to make several runs back and forth, and you look like you don't really know what you're doing. Um, and I say that too because you know, uh, depending on how you're getting started, you know, some some of it is very much you know kind of learning on the job, on-site training, and uh, so <coughs> excuse me doing that work and, and learning as much as you can ahead of time kind of prepare you for that even more and and that um, 
that kind of thinking and that kind of mindset has started bleeding over into my, my trapping season this year as well. And, you know, this this past kind of preseason was the first year that I've gone through and I went through, went over every one of my MB550s, checking the pan tension if it was too heavy, adjusting that pan tension, and uh, that's something that I've always just taken for granted. I've just assumed that, you know, they're all good, and I was really surprised at how many of my traps had um, heavier pan tension than I would like for them to have. Um, and so there again, that's something, you know, it, it, as a hobby trapper and, you know, it's not that big of a deal. But if you're, you know, if you're trying to put up numbers or if you're doing a, a larger scale predator job, you know, that's all stuff that's very important and is going to impact you and your performance on that job. And, uh, Sorry, I'm just kind of looking at my notes, making sure. Um, and so, you know, in, in setting up, like this, this this farm that I'm setting up that I'm trapping now, you know, it's a large farm, and I'm trying to get as many traps out and as much ground covered as I can. And, man, having those, having my, my MB550s you know, tuned and ready and, and having enough of them to where I had one the other day that I wasn't firing like I wanted it to, I threw it aside, grabbed another one, and set it. And to me, that's you know that's when you're getting that kind of professional mindset of, you know, I've got the equipment, and for the most part, I've got it worked out how I need it to uh, be as efficient as possible. When I'm out here on the trap line, I'm setting traps. I'm not tinkering with traps. I'm not adjusting things. I'm setting traps, and that's going to help me to be as efficient as possible and get as many traps out as possible to help, help influence my catch as, as best as I can. And uh, so that's where I, I got into this um, the conibear trigger situation, you know. And uh, so make a catch, and one of the trigger wires breaks off. So I just I just snapped a picture of my phone, and I said, made a post, and said, you know, what's your what's your protocol or something like that for trigger replacement? And I had tons of different answers, right? Um, anywhere from you know using trapping wire as a replacement, which I, I've done, we've all done probably. You know, you take you some trapping wire and wrap it around there and you fashion it the best you can and you keep it rolling. Um, to one guy made the comment that you don't have enough traps because, you know, if you if your trigger wire breaks, you ought to have enough traps to just swap that out and keep on rolling. And that was a hugely valid point. And, you know, that that rung true when I got thinking about my, my foothold traps and when I had one that was uh, not tuned just right, I threw it aside, got another one. And so uh, that was that was spot on, and I appreciated that perspective because that's to me that's thinking about it not just as a hobby trapper. Because a lot of folks said, you know, well, I'll just replace it right there on the trap line, and and I get that, but that in the heat of the moment, that's not the thing that I want to do. Is take ten minutes or five minutes or whatever it's going to be like to go up to the truck, dig out. I don't usually carry a replacement trigger. Not on the trap line. Now, I've got some back here at the shop, but um, that's not something in my mind that I'm thinking that I'm going to do on the on the trap line, you know. And so I, I feel like that's and so that's where I, I I brought up the idea of possibly every other year just replacing those trigger wires because even if you're replacing them on the line, every that's what kind of it boiled down to me was every year. You know, as I'm setting, especially if I'm setting heavier on beavers or something like that, inevitably there's going to be multiple ones that the darn trigger wire breaks, and then you're trying to figure out what to do. And so, if you had just a set schedule of, you know, every even year, I'm replacing all these triggers. I mean, darn, you know, it's it's worth it to me. Um, and I think that. That's just a different, a different perspective. Um, I did have a couple folks mention using stainless steel um, trigger wires, and I didn't didn't see any that were specific for Belial's. Um, but that's definitely something that I'm very interested in because they said those will last a lot longer, and I like that idea a lot. So that's something I'm going to look into. Um, but just that, just that mindset of, you know. A lot of people, and, and I'd be the first to admit that 
this past year and when I pulled all my traps they laid in a big pile behind my shed for six months until you know a couple months before trapping season or a month before trapping season I'm like shoot man I gotta get these things cleaned up and, and ready to go and I always had the best of intentions that you know trapping season goes out man I'm gonna be I'm gonna be Johnny on the spot I'm gonna get these things cleaned up I'm gonna get them dyed and, and put away and then you know I'll be way ahead of the game when trapping season gets here I haven't got that yet uh, but I, I think this year with my with my more professional mindset I'm gonna be more diligent about that because if that's if that's something that's paying your bills if that's something that's putting food on your table you know that's got to be something that you've got to put more thought and time and effort into um, just you know that's that's the way businesses operate you know like I said time is money and you know if there's something that's costing time um, when you could be making money you better have that covered ahead of time um, and so, to me, that there's kind of a twofold situation there of one having the right equipment and having enough equipment so that you know when something goes down, you just replace it and you go and you save that time. Versus and and then also, you know, covering your bases ahead of time so that you minimize the opportunities that you're having that downtime on the trap line so that you can again be more efficient, get more sets out because the more sets out, the more locations you have set up, the more animals. You're uh, so let's see, just, um, so I think that, I think that is something that I'm, I may, I, I definitely want to look into the, the stainless steel, um, trigger wires for my conibear because if, if there's something out there that'll last longer, I'm all about that. Um, but then also, you know, being more diligent about checking all of my traps, making sure they're all working properly in off season and having plenty of time just uh i don't know i hope i hope this episode kind of made sense and wasn't just rambling it it, it all makes sense in my mind and, and I've, I've been thinking about this for like i say several months to a year of just improving improving things and, and thinking about things differently um and thinking about you know, changing my mindset to from, you know, well, this is just, you know, if I'm using old, you know, or if I wire up a conor bear trigger, it ain't no big deal because, you know, I'm just trying to catch a beaver for fun versus now, you know, I, I'm catching this beaver because somebody is paying me to catch this beaver. And so my equipment is going to be in tip top shape when I'm after that so that I can do it as, as quickly and efficiently as possible so that I can maximize my time and money. Um, I hope I hope that's kind of rings evident and, and rings true with some of y'all that um, whether you're thinking about uh, you know going after numbers of, of animals you know 100 coyotes or whether you're thinking about trying to you know start a, a nuisance trapping business um, I, I really think that, that taking the time and, and you know if you if that's one of your goals then stopping and think about it from a you know a, a professional perspective a realistic perspective of you know this this is this is my objective how can i most efficiently and optimally get there um versus just running at it willy-nilly because that's what i've done for a whole lot of years is just run at it willy-nilly and uh you know order stuff at the last minute and try to piece and throw stuff together and and uh, cobble things together on, on the fly and you know sometimes you've got to do that stuff but um, you know, being prepared ahead of time, having thought out, well thought out of, you know, what am I going to need? What am, what might I need? Uh, and, and this, you know, thinking about your contingency plans, um, I, I think that'll go a long way in helping us all to be more efficient and better trappers. And uh, for those of you that are just trapping your your farm or your hunting club or or uh, you know the back forty catching bobcats out of your chicken coop. Uh, I hope this wasn't. Um, I hope this wasn't a bore for you. I, I, um, one thing I, I think, I think that a lot of people think is that you know something like this may not be real realistic. You know, it's not that realistic for me to start a nuisance trapping business and, and be able to quit my job. But um, it's, it's not something that's going to happen overnight. Um, 
but give me a few years and I'll prove to you whether this is realistically uh, true or not. Um, but but I think that you know if you're in the obviously you've got to be in the right place, and it depends on what you're going to do. You know if you're going to if you're going to do large scale predator jobs, you better be in a rural area with some high uh, net worth landowners that are that are serious about management, land management, and wildlife management um, that can that are that are looking for that. Uh, you know, and if you're looking at being a, a animal damage control person, you better be in an urban urban area that you know has plenty of houses for wildlife to get into. Um, and so, as as trapping season fades out and we get into kind of more of a, a nuisance trapping season, or as as we get out of trapping season, that's something that I'm going to try to focus in on um, and and do you know a little series on uh, some of my perspectives from you know trying to start. Uh, a, a nuisance trapping business. And one thing that I've recently done is put together kind of an overhead spreadsheet uh, when when trying to figure out you know your pricing and how you're going to charge. There's a lot of different aspects that, that you should take into account, and uh, I've, I've there again a lot of times I've just kind of shot from the hip and shifted on the fly, and I you know I'll go out and look at a job and I'll kind of get a number in my head, and that's kind of what I go with. Uh, but I don't really have any data to back that up. But I sat down and I did this, and I think I think this would be really valuable because personally, I feel like it's um, you know it covers a lot of your bases, and it, it really um, we'll, we'll do a whole podcast on that because I think I hope that it's as valuable to y'all as I feel like it is because I think it's really a good outline and gives you gives you a good perspective and makes you think through every little thing that you know, there's a lot of expenses that we don't really think about or, or pay that much attention to, but um, they're real expenses that cost real money, and so something to be uh, cognizant of, and something we got to cover. So, anyway, I'll wrap that up for tonight. I appreciate y'all bearing with me. Actually, my my cold is a uh, kind of taking a back seat, and so I feel like we made it through this pretty well. Uh, if y'all are wrapping up trapping season, be sure to follow. I, I, I'm posting my semi live trap line videos, so uh, be sure to follow along for the next week and a half or so, or through the end of February, uh, depending on when this goes live and. Uh, Hope y'all had a good season, and we'll see. Uh, we'll get the auction results here in the next couple months, and see how the the fur market's looking. But uh, be sure you need trapping supplies. Maybe you got a spring beaver line coming up, or you've got some. You're working on some uh, spring predator work before your fawning and nesting season. Hit up Cox Bros and uh, get you some last minute supplies that you need. And otherwise, we will catch you on the next one. <laughs>